All right, talk derby to me. Uh, once again, we've been bu- busy recently, smashing smashing them out. But these ones, these ones are my favourite. When we get a, we get someone on who's an actual derby lad, a proper derby lad. And if you're not from derby and you're listening, you might need a derby dictionary to to get through because it's two of us, both both born and bred here. He might have a bit of an American twang though because he's uh, he's been over in Las Vegas for for a few years now. Chris Riggett, how are you, mate? Pretty good, mate. Yeah, good. Good to be here. How, how's everything? Obviously, difficult times at the minute. How's everything been over over that side of the, the pond, lockdown wise? Um, yeah, it's been. It's obviously had its challenges. You know, we. Uh, I think we were probably a week or two before sort of the UK with schools and that. You know, being locked down and. Yeah, I think that was early March, and then. Yeah, you know, at first it was kind of uh, I don't know a little bit of a sort of unique situation, so we kind of half enjoyed it. Um, and then after maybe six weeks, a couple of months, you're sort of tearing the air out, climbing the walls. But yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's been okay. You know, it's nice to, you know, it's starting to sort of get there now. Schools are back, even though, you know, sort of the state schools are, um, they're doing the distance learning online. So, uh, you know, my I've got an eight-year-old and a six-year-old and they're a Catholic school here. So luckily they're actually there in person, which helps because, you know, they're, probably sick of being in the house and it's nice for parents to have a bit of space as well. So, you know, it kind of getting there, you know, but things like footy and I coach here and that's still not really, um, it, you know, we, we can, we can coach, we can train, but it's meant to be distanced. And I don't know how you do, you know, distance football, but it's um, <laughs> desperately trying not to say soccer. Here. Um, yeah, what was I was say soccer. So yeah, we we're getting there. I think it'll probably be a few more weeks, and then hopefully they'll relax it a little bit more, and we can get back into it a little bit. Why Las Vegas? How come how have you ended up over there? Well, my missus is from here. Okay. So um, you know, basically, you know, about nine, ten years ago now, we we met, and um, you know, she her her parents are here. Mm. So you know, when I retired from from playing um, back in two thousand twelve. Um, just thought, why not? Let's go and live in Vegas. Let's try it, and you know, we, we you know, we're still here. So, obviously, enjoy it. A derby lad, and it, you went to Benno's, didn't you? St Benedict's. Went to Benedict's. Yep, St Mary's Primary School there, and um, yeah, St Benedict's Duffield Road, which you know, brilliant memories. You know, still have family members who go there. You know, nieces and nephews, and um, you know, my. my uh, my mum's sister was a teacher there. She's just retired, but you know my uncle was a teacher there. You know, so you know, it's pretty strong connections with the school, and had brilliant times. They're obviously great memories for sports, which most sort of lads have are from school. But managed to get a few uh, GCSEs along the way. But you know, was I stopped short of doing the A levels because of going to Derby, obviously as an, as an apprentice. Yeah. How did it all start, football-wise? Then obviously a big, massive Derby fan growing up and. And getting into eventually getting into the academy, how did it first start for you? For you playing football? Did you know from a young age that yeah you had talent, or was it something that developed later on? Um, well, I think I think it's one of them that, like most you know kids growing up in England, I, I loved football, and uh, you know it was very close family. My, I've got three older brothers, and my dad was you know all big Derby fans and. Um, so I was just, you know, like I say, I was the youngest of four, so I was always exposed to playing against bigger kids and getting kicked and smashed all over the place. And um, yeah, loved it, you know, and then maybe, I don't know, 10, 11, uh, sort of a big moment as I got called, I got, a, I guess I got picked for Derby Boys, which was at um, Shelton Mark. Yeah. Um, you know, which, which was, a, you know, that was a big confidence boost at that age. Um, Roger Hearn was the was the under 11s or under 10s Derby boys coach and sort of went from there really I had Andy Witt through uh, I think under 12s under 13s played with some really good players and you know got better through playing with them um, yeah you know honestly I was I was genuinely probably middle of the pack um, 15 14 15 and then you know, as a kid I was a striker and always played. Um, you got that bright Derby sunlight coming in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was always. I was always a forward, and um, yeah, moved back to a midfield player. And then, I guess at about fifteen, um, 
you know, I played a lot of golf, a lot of cricket as well. And I, I love football, don't get me wrong, obviously I love football, but, you know, the, I would say there were probably players then that were better than me. You know, at my age, Michael Lyons had been in the England, um, Lillishaw, Kevin Nicholson, who was our age in Derby Boys. Um, you know, brilliant players. Um, there's more that, I, you know, I, I could name, I could reel off a, a, a list, but, you know, I was okay. And then I went to, Steve Brown put me a centre-back um, when I was about, I think I was 15, I think it was under 15s. John Davidson, um, who was an ex-Derby player as well, he was a, he was sort of assisting Roundy. And one of the first games I remember was against Forrest and uh, Marlon Airwood was playing. We were playing a back three, I believe, because the first team were, Jim yeah. Smith was doing it. So we want, you know, they wanted all the youth teams to do it. And I, I just took to it, you know, I was, I was tall, I was growing and I was sort of good in the air, you know, my big, my big bumps getting on the end of all the high balls. And um, yeah, just it, it, that was the switch that kind of, I guess, gave me, I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have uh, made it if I was playing midfield. So that was a big moment, you know, and then I kind of got better and better and fortunate and right place at the right time. Sometimes a particular coach likes you and you, you play well in a few important games. And I got my um, apprenticeship off. I was last actually to get offered it. I think there was 10. I think there were six from Benedict's or seven maybe in, from one year who got apprentice, apprenticeships and I was the last to um, to get offered one and they were kind of really on the fence. So thankfully they did, you know, because that could have, you know, things could have been definitely very different. I always find it interesting because I speak to, like you've seen, speak to loads of footballers of different generations, different teams and how much of it do you think is, is ability and how much do you think is like hard work, um, putting it in on the training ground, learning, because you I've played to a, not to anywhere near your level, obviously, but you have some lads that are like, he should have kicked on and he should have been like unbelievable. And you have some lads that think, yeah. oh, he's, he's overachieving a bit there slightly. How much do you think is, is the ability and how much is it of how you use it? I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. I mean, um, it's a good question. I think, you know, ability obviously helps. Um, you know, certain positions might suit a certain kid. Um you know, and I, I don't want to name names, but I've, I have friends who were fantastic players and it wasn't because of a lack of hard work. You know, yeah. it, 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 just, it just didn't quite, just didn't quite happen. Yeah, maybe, um, again, it can be moments in life, you know, a, a certain person's watching you at a certain game or you don't have the best time or it might be an injury at 16, 17, which, you know, people, um, you hear that quite common. You know, they get a, a, a bad knock at 16 and it just, your development just stalls and, um, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good question. I think that it's probably maybe 50% ability. Yeah. Um, I think, um, mentally, uh, is an important factor. Um, you know, and I'm always, I feel f funny saying it because I did play. I'm not trying to say that I conquered all these things. You know, it's, I was yeah. fortunate uh, I'm not saying, oh, I, I, I was men mentally, I was strong and I worked really hard. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that, you know, some players, um, it works out. And um, I think, I think obviously, um, your approach to it and how you train, um, sacrifices, you know, nights out, maybe um, things like that that you, that you try and stay away from. But um, yeah, fate, you know, like I say, I think it's, I think it plays an important role and, um, sometimes it's just not meant to be. Did you did you play with anyone at youth level that you look back at that didn't go on to have a, a career that you you think maybe they they could have and it just didn't work out for him? I think Michael Lyons I mentioned earlier is one that sticks out. You know his his brother was the was coaching at Derby Park. Yeah, Pat Lyons, yeah. Uh, Michael, you know, played with him for years. Um, you know, there's some players that maybe played lower leagues. Um, you know, if you'd asked me to bet as a 15, 16 year old, you'd have thought they'd go on and, and you know, play at the highest level possible. And like I say, there's just a number of factors in kids' de youth development where from the ages of 12 to, you know, 18, 19, it can, it can massively, massively change. And yeah, there was, there was plenty of players who were, um, you know, I remember a lad called Daniel Davidson at 11, 12 years old, who played with the Dobby Boys, winger, unbelievable player. Um, you know, there's, and it was one of, you know, dozens really. Um, so yeah, it's you know, I, I do definitely consider myself um, fortunate to to have had a career in the game. 
how does it come about then being being in the youth team to to getting your first team if you your first appearance for the first team? Do you, are you training with the like the reses and then, and then getting a call at one yeah. day? Is it a surprise? Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, well, I mean, I've not thought about it for a while. It was uh, so his first year apprentice, um, fifty quid or whatever it was. I think it was forty forty two quid a week first year, forty eight second year. So I, well, something something close to that. Living at mum and dad's house, um, and then the first year, I think the club had to nominate two players to go and try out for England. Basically, under must have been under 18s. So me and a lad called Craig Hansen went, another Derby lad. Um, he was a play in a forward player, just playing off the front man, brilliant player. Um, and we went to, I think it was at Lillyshaw. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I think we we're there for two or three days. Uh, and the names there, I mean, the name drops were unbelievable. Looking back, obviously at the time, I didn't know anyone. Yeah. But there's like John Terry and um, Woodgates and Ledley King. Oh, it was an amazing sort of era, really, for young English players, looking back. But fantastic players. But um, yeah, kind of felt, you know, I didn't feel massively inferior. There were, Stephen Gerrard was there. Players like that were so obviously better players than me, quite clearly. Um, but I, I got a standby. Um, I got, I got basically named as a standby player. I think they named eight, an 18 man squad or something for trip. I think it was a trip to Italy under 18s away. Anyway, someone pulled out, they called me up and, uh, yeah, it, I think we went and beat, I, I think I came on for part of the second half. I can't, honestly can't remember, but we beat Italy under 21 or under 18s, 5-1. And I can't remember coming home and saying to my dad, there's this lad called Steven Gerrard, look out for him. Really? And then a few weeks later, he made his debut for the first team and scored, I think, early on in his, you know. Yeah. But that that kind of was a big thing for me because I came back from that. I had confidence. They gave me a um, two-year uh, professional contract, I think then. For, I think it was 300, 300 and 350. First year, 300. Second year, 350 a week. I think it was that. And um, yeah, it kind of went from there. Um Starting to get playing a few more um, reserve games, second year apprentice. Uh, yeah, it was Billy McEwen. Steve Brown was, was my coach. Was my coach? You know, as a youth, youth team. Um, Steve Taylor was there, but he had a few one or two health issues. But uh, Billy McEwen was there as well, who was tough, but um, he took the reserve. So he was scared stiff. Because you you know you start off on the bench reserve and you you're in the, you're in the dugout and you listen to our Billy's yelling and shouting at all the guys on the pitch and you think Christ I don't even want to go on he's going to crucify me um, so yeah it was you know it, it, reserves obviously is a mixture of players that first team players that don't really want to play but they need fitness and then young lads like me who are unbelievably eager to you know to try and further the career so it's kind of a strange little setup but we had a good um, good year or two in the reserves we, we actually won the FA Premier Reserve League I think it was I remember it um, we played at Upton Park our last game and uh, I think we, we must have won or whatever but we won the league which was, was great me and Steve Elliott I remember playing centre back um, I think Roundy called up a couple of first team players to reinforce the team for that night so we'd win it, it. I, remember, I, remember, I remember Dion Byrne um, played so I've got we got pictures or whatever afterwards and I was thinking I don't remember Dion playing many games but <laughs> did, he, did he play yeah. the medal <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah that was that was that was super we um, won that that was a good experience obviously and back then you're obviously playing in stadiums and you know it might be a thousand you know I remember going to Everton and places like this these Anfield and playing in big stadiums even though there might be a thousand or two or five hundred or whatever but you got used to the atmosphere you know, I think that can be a little bit lost now, but yeah, that's another that's another conversation. But uh, yeah, that that was that was that was memorable, definitely. And then um, I remember, I think the next season, I want to say two thousand or maybe ninety nine. The first team went to Chicago, or at least one stop was Chicago. Maybe they went to Colorado as well on a on a preseason tour. I didn't. I got left. I didn't go. I didn't. I got left out. So there was me and a, a group of us who who you know weren't involved. And then they had a bad start to the season. Um, uh, it was I, obviously I remember the defenders. 
it was like a Carbonari, Bragstad, uh, Spencer Pryor. Um, I, th- I think Christian had left. Christian Dade had left by then. Gaz Was that a bit later? West. He came a bit later. He came a little bit later. So I think they lost or they were struggling for the first mm. few games. So there was an early Carling Cup game. Um, you know, was it? I think it was called Carling Cup then. And we were playing West Brom away. Um, I played in that one, which was good, and I scored, which yeah, was amazing. So we, yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. I think Bragstad, Bragstad scored one or maybe even two. Anyway, yeah. we won. Two, yeah. And I, yeah, and I scored, and that was um, obviously a big moment. Uh, you know, scoring on your debut. I mean, I'd, I'd play, I'd played. I should rewind. I played the last game of the season before half time. I came on at Chelsea. Oh, okay. So I played the last game. I was on the bench with the two. It was boiling. Uh, two nil down at half time, and there was Zola and Flo and Viali and oh, like we, we get you know Jimmy Smith like we're coming on. I think she is. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> absolutely, that was getting thrown at the deep end. We lost four nil. Was that a different game? Yeah, that was that. Was, yeah, I, so I, so after um, West Brom, my league debut was Villa away. Uh, on the so three days later, I started in that and scored. And we lost. That was like a recurring theme. Kept scoring, kept losing. Um, yeah, so scored at scored at Villa, and then I think that's the I don't know the order, but we had Chelsea. Um, Tottenham was one. Top, Tottenham was one. Yeah. There was a game. There was like a weird run of maybe five or six goals in six or eight games, something like that, really early on. And then uh, there was a home game against Liverpool that on TV. That I remember me and Michael Owen both went off. Um, there was a corner and I got he, he sort of stumbled and I yeah. my knee went straight into his head and I got I, I couldn't walk it was one of them it sounds like how are you hurt from that he got stretched <laughs> off with his head I you know you just smashed your knee and I literally could not stand so I went off and they yeah that was my that was my that was my first home game maybe I can't remember you know my, my uh, I should know that really but yeah, it was a definitely an eventful um, start. Let's put it that way. Going back, to amazing, you know, amazing memories. Yeah, yeah. Going back to the, the debut of the West Brom game, I heard a story at the time because I was obviously going to games and stuff. Did your brother get kicked out of that game for celebrating your goal? I think I think that's partially true. I think um, I think what happened was, you know, and this story changes a little bit over time, or at least when he's had when he's had a few beers, he, he, yeah, it gets I think, more. I think more. He, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think I think he ripped a chair out when okay. I scored, or he was celebrating, or he jumped, he got on a chair and it snapped or something. Um, and a steward uh, went to turf him out, and I think my dad or whatever was pleading with him and explained it, so they kind of let him back in. Yeah, I think that was I think that was pretty much it. So, yeah, I don't think he got kicked out. I think there was a you know a threat of that, but I don't think no. it actually happened. It's yeah. a great story telling it. My brother was scoring for Derby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he got thrown out. Yeah, got into a fight with twenty fans. You know. Yeah, I've dropped. I've dropped my fifteen of them. Yeah. Um, exactly. uh, obviously, you were genuinely like you were like obviously genuinely a Derby fan growing up, weren't you? And you used to go to games and stuff. So, yeah, this is something I've always tried to imagine. What's it like walking out? Like, do you take it in your stride at that age, or is it just surreal? Like you're walking out and you've just scored for Derby. Yeah, I think. Um... A little bit of both, um, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that one. Definitely surreal. I mean, I remember. I, I remember. I was. I felt like I'd cracked it when I got an apprenticeship. Like I thought, oh my god, that if if nothing else now, I've played for Derby youth team. That I mean, I was so proud to play for under 15s. You know, and to be to walk around like we used to back in the day as apprentices. We'd get off the bus from baseball ground, get the bus into town, walk around with our wash bags. And like we'd like, you know, have a little little strut on. And I remember thinking then, you know, oh, yeah, I've played for Derby youth team. Anything from here is, you know, a bonus. And then uh, I guess you get into the bubble then, if you like, of, of, you know, you just, I was so desperate then to try and make it. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's definitely surreal. But, um, you know, it, I think because we're at the baseball ground still as well, you know, I was getting the bus or getting dropped off in the mornings to the baseball ground. We were training at um, Ram Marina, the Rainsway. You know, we didn't have Moore Farm or Pride Park or anything like that. I think my first year as 
an apprentice, they opened Pride Park. The kids, yeah. We were on a car. I remember the Queen was there and yeah, yeah, we did a lap was, of the pitch. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Oh, and the first one. night, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> you, you'll know about the me, but the, I, feel, I feel like Ashley Ward scored and the lights went out. Yeah, Bar- the game got, Barnsley. Uh, no, Barnsley. Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Wimbledon, yeah. I, th- yeah. And, uh, I remember that. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe the youth team games, you know, back to your question about it being surreal, youth team games and reserve games were lucky to use the baseball ground because they still kept it. I don't know about the Leafs or whatever, but we still had the, and the pitch was unbelievable. It was like a carpet. Mm. So it was a fantastic place to learn, um, you know, you learn your trade if you like, and to, to kind of be surrounded and involved in their memories in the, in the changing rooms and Gordon Guthrie was there and mm. he had all these stories about all the past players. And my dad was, you know, in the seventies, massive, mm. you know, and went, you know, so, yeah, probably yeah. didn't probably because I was fifteen, sixteen, didn't really fully um, realize just how good it was. Maybe it's to now, you know, I'm forty, just turned forty, and um, that makes me feel yeah. old, nice to watch you play. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know it's it's funny, mate. The uh, yeah, time flies, but the 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 yeah, looking back it was amazing, and um, yeah, very proud to have, to have uh, to. Have, to have got through all that it was it was a brilliant feeling. What was the change room like at that time when you're when you when you were playing? Because when you look back now, it's mad for me because that was like when I first started, like fell in love with football. So that team that you're involved in is like my go-to, like my team that I loved watching as a kid. Like yeah, but some of the names that you played with, like incredible, like King Cladzi, Ravanelli, uh, Strupa. What well. Two sided question. Like, what what was the change room like? Was it unbelievable as a young lad being around it? And and who were the who were the yeah. people that stood out? That like, were, could you just so I mean, at it? Rainsway, I mean, the first name I'd say yeah, be Stimac. You know, oh, because cool. from sort of fourteen when I was fifteen, really, when I was is, is that in that position, he was obviously um, fantastic player. Goes without saying, but had such a presence about him. I remember, you know, we'd be at Rainsway as apprentices doing all the jobs and stuff. I remember knocking on the door with the first team change room and literally like, you know, can I come in and sweep the floor, floor please? Sorry. You know, you're that much in awe of everyone there. Wow. And, um, Brilliant. Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, Bayano, mm. uh, Stimac. And, and these were a little bit before me, really. This was a better yeah. team, really, honestly, than when I played, than I played in. Iranio, Bayano, Stimac, the one trap, these yeah. guys. Sanovic was unbelievable. Sanovic, unbelievable. I mean, brilliant player, of course. I mean, what a team. Um, but uh, honestly, if that if, you know, if that was the team, I probably wouldn't ever have played. Because you know, you're like, you you look at it like that. They have they have Christian Daly, uh, Gary Rowett, um, Jakob Larsson, Dean Yates, Paul McGrath, Stimac. This is only a few years just before you know I started playing really. So would I have played? Um, and I probably missed, a, you know, a couple of out there, but probably wouldn't have played. You know, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of fate. Or I think they finished seventh or eighth, maybe didn't they? As high as that one year with that team. Um, you know, and I only got a chance because they were conceding a load of goals. You know, Stimac had, had moved on. I think he'd gone to West by the time Ham. I was playing West Ham. Um, you know, and they'd made some money on Christian Daly, hadn't they? He'd, he'd, he'd gone to um, Blackburn, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was uh, it was amazing to be in the um, in the mix, if you like, especially with with someone like Stevie Elliott, who was again he was a derby lad with me, so we both had uh, that connection, if you like. Um, he was, I think, he was a year. A year older than me, possibly two in, in football in the in the in terms of the apprentice apprentice years. Um, but we had a few games playing together, maybe in a in a in a four or uh, in a back three, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, after after a few years after that, then some of the players signed some good names. As you mentioned, King Cladzi um, being one of them. Who and you mentioned ability at the start of the conversation. I mean, I don't know of many who had more more ability than him. And you couldn't get the ball off him. You know what he's going to do. You know he's going to he's faking to go down that right side every time. Just checks back he on the outside, stop his left. But he can't stop it. Can't stop it. So uh, I remember one. I remember one training session when I was sixteen, seventeen. Around him, made me do one v ones with one shot, and I was like, 
good luck. You know, he didn't know what he was going to do. I was just about to say that. Oh, he's he's he, he, yeah. you, you, you watch him and think even he doesn't know what he's going to do. So how does a defender know what he's going to do? Yeah, but that, you know, that was uh, yeah, that was challenging. So yeah, I was for- very fortunate to be there. Arguably in the, in Derby's best sort of era of the last, you know, not not including sort of the golden years when they won the league, but a recent sort of memory. I was probably there with the best and the best spell really of players, arguably. Can you pick a favourite? moment I know it's a difficult question because you've obviously at the club for quite a few years but is there a moment that, or something that happened that you look back on when you reminisce on your derby career and you think yeah that that was that the the moment um I think probably scoring on my debut was yeah. probably the moment um I mean I've got some pictures of you know that, that feeling you know that just sheer it make, literally makes my hair stand up now thinking about it you know your debut you're playing you know all your family are there to score a goal of that, it was just, it was amazing. You know, I mean, you, you, no one's taken that away from you after that. You've made, you've started a game for your team, you've scored. I mean, that's that's for me, that was like the pinnacle, really. Um, you know, moments in terms of results and things like that. We you know, obviously we won at Man United to stay up. I mean, that's a pretty, uh, you don't get to say that too often. Um, you know, Malcolm Christie, I think it was 1-0, wasn't it? Um, they'd won the league. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so they were maybe, you know, not to take the gloss off it, but, you know, maybe we'd, we've got them at a good time. But we still had to go to Old Trafford, a lot of pressure. Um, you know, and that was quite a young team, I seem to remember. So to go to Man United and, and win, to stay in the Premier League was, was uh, you know, Pretty special as well. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? It's incre- I just I forgot all about that game. I just remember that, yeah, because Malcolm Christian scored for a while, I think, and he, he put it straight. He left, yeah, left foot in the top corner. I can remember it now. Yeah, yeah it's a great goal, brilliant goal, and he, you know, it, it'd be reminiscent of me to uh, not mention his absolute sitter that he missed in the second half to put us two in a lot. Yeah, he always ask him about that. It's always on. Have a look on YouTube. Oh, yeah, one of the worst misses you'll ever see. For, uh, <laughs> Would have just you know just made it all comfortable, but you know he kept us on our toes for the you know the rest of the game. But brilliant goal, and I don't think I don't I think you asked, if you ask Malcolm, he'd uh, you know I, I think that I would guess that would be the highlight of his uh, career as well. Yeah, were well, you two good mates then? Because obviously you when you eventually left Derby, you went alongside Malcolm Christie to, to Middlesbrough. You two always been good mates then? Yeah, well we we. Um, we 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 did go together, obviously, to, to Middlesbrough. He he. So he'd made it into the first team. I don't know a year, probably a year, maybe maybe before me. Um, mm-hmm. He came. They signed him, didn't they, from the non-league team? Non-Eastern. Um, there you go. Thank you. Um, scored a lot of goals non-league, and then he played reserves a little bit. Tried to get, you know, was trying to force his way in. Um, remember a few games. Remember the Middlesbrough game was it? He scored two when he came off the bench at Pride Park. Um, so, but he was, you know, he was kind of a first team player, and I wasn't. You know, I was in the reserves, the, the local, with the, and then obviously got to know him better as I started playing. Because he's, you know, Malcolm's quite a insular person, quite shy. I think it's fair, but you know, you get to know him pretty well. And then we we obviously moved um, together when I got to know him a lot better. We went to Middlesbrough, um, roomed together a lot. Um, you know, great lad. Um, you know, we, we, it's uh, it's funny when you, I, you know, because we're often sort of synonymous. We took, people ask me about Malcolm a lot because we moved together and we had, you know, we had a, a nasty training ground collision, unfortunately, which which broke his leg. And he, so I remember that when you say it, and it's 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 brutal to think of it. And um, he he we. We clash shins, basically, you know, and looking back now, it was um, a freak moment. We weren't, we didn't have shin pads on, which was obviously stupid. Um, we both went down, I had a big lump on my shin, both, both in incredible pain, he started screaming, snapped his tibia. So ambulance came on the field. This was not long after we'd both got to Middlesbrough. So, um, uh, you know, very sort of mixed feelings you know because that you know he, he struggled after that you know he got he did get back and he got uh um fit played a few more games but it was in and out and it but it stemmed from that so 
uh, you know, it's difficult to sort of tell that story without being honest and just, you know, it is what it is. It was an accident and, um, you know, hopefully Malcolm doesn't hold any grudges against me. I don't think he does because obviously, I was, you know, he had, we were with each other for three or four years after that. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah, it was it was a shocking moment really, but one that I'd, I'd like to take the clock back and, um, you know, it is, it is, it is what it is. But, I never knew that. We, yeah, it was. It was. You know, we, I didn't. I don't think we sort of made it really. Didn't really publicise what you know really happened, but it was literally one of them where you're both dangling for the. It wasn't even a tackle. It was. It was like a fifty-fifty sort of dangling, and just just hit shins, and uh, you know there's a snap, and uh, it was bad. It was brutal. So um, yeah, you know it's it's uh, it's a shame that well that's an understatement. So it, because Malcolm was um, hell of a goal scorer. Was, yeah. You know, it was the sort of the um, fox in the box type player. A lot, of, you know, so quick, eye for a goal. You know, great lad. So, you know, you know, obviously have um, regrets. Might not be the right word because I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to change anything looking back. But you know, I'd, I'd you know, it'd be nice if that, you know, if we could rewrite history a little bit there. Go, go into Middlesbrough, obviously. Uh... They, this might be wrong so you might have to correct me but was you linked with Liverpool quite strongly before you went to Middlesbrough? Um, yeah there was a time where um, I think Liverpool I think there was an interest there you know I think um, my dad I think had spoken to um, Gerard Hooley I think and, and it, it was the manager at the time and an agent but honestly and this, is, this sounds like a classic footballer answer but I genuinely don't really know mm. what maybe Derby said we want X amount of money and they said, well, we're not, you know, and that was really that. I don't think there was anything really, you know, I can, you know, obviously you hear that Liverpool want you, that's a nice, great boost, but it wasn't one of them where I was knocking on the door saying, I want to go to Liverpool. Um, it was just, it was really just more of a, um, an ego boost really than anything else. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know any more than that really, other than it's pretty cool to be linked with them, but, you know, didn't happen for whatever reason. Well, leaving Derby, then we, we, was that your decision, or was that obviously it was a difficult time for the club? Was it just the fact that they needed to to maybe get some cashing on a few of their assets, or was it your decision that, that you wanted to leave? Well, no, I didn't. You know, I didn't ask to leave. It wasn't. You know, ultimately, it is your decision because you don't. You're not. You haven't got a gun to your head. You don't have to leave. Um, but you know, we, we'd been relegated. Um, we'd played. Well, you know, we went in the January, so midway through the season, um, Gregory was a manager. They'd sold quite a few players. I think Rory had left, Higginbottom had left, um, one or two others. We weren't really kicking on, I don't think, at the time. And um, Malcolm had been linked with Middlesbrough, I think, the previous summer. Um, I think I'm right in saying that. And it's funny because... I. In, in, in a sort of twist of fate, we, I'd just been playing that, that summer for England under 21s at the European Championships and we got knocked out by Italy um, in, a, in the quarterfinals or whatever it was. And, you know, I, I'd been playing, which was great. Um, and the, the, Massimo Macaroni scored the winning goal and I was obviously marking him and he basically did me a treat for the goal. The ball came like a diag over my shoulder and I swear to God, it was the luckiest touch ever. But Massimo will say he meant it. But he basically tried to control it coming over his head. And it sort of went in his path, 10 yards in front. And I turned like a barge, you know, <laughs> unbelievable. And then he just smashed it in from 20 yards with his left foot or whatever it was, top corner. Anyway, on the back of that, Middlesbrough signed him. So I think they paid about 8 million for him. He had a great Euros and he was at the, you know, I think he, just, I think he got called up to the Italian full squad. And and then I think Middlesbrough called their interest in in they were they were going to pay a lot of money for Mali I think or a lot more than they ended up paying. So then we both stayed. Um, or, you know I wasn't looking like going, but Malcolm ended up staying. Um, and then in the January, um, they were they came back in for Malcolm, and uh, basically tied me in with it. You know the link was of course Steve Round was at Middlesbrough and Steve Steve McLaren was at Middlesbrough. So McLaren was the first team coach, uh, manager, and, and um, Steve Brown was the assistant. 
and I know, you know, I know Steve well. He's, you know, he's obviously at Arsenal now, a great coach, and he, you know, that was a big part of it. Yeah. Um, and Derby, they didn't say. It was just a done. It, 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 I don't remember it being, "Hey, Chris, come and sit down. Do you really want to go?" Like Gregory, I, I think Gregory wasn't happy. I don't think he wanted to, but I didn't have a conversation with him about it. The club just called and said, "You, you go in. You both. We need the money." Mm-hmm. Um, so we drove up on on. Uh, I think it was transfer deadline day, um, or maybe the possibly the day before. I think it was deadline day. Mm-hmm. We drove up and. Um, Obviously, you know, whether me and Malcolm had the same agent, and uh, met with met with uh, Steve McLaren, and yeah, a few hours later it was done. So kind of weird because you know, big moment. Obviously, when you look back, big moment of uh, of life really to leave at, at that age. You know, it was two thousand three January, um, so I was only twenty two at the time, um, but. I don't think you could really argue from a career move. You know, I played played mostly in the Premier League after that. Played in you know a couple of UEFA Cup runs, but obviously you have thoughts of you know what if that didn't happen or you know of course. But um, yeah, a tough one. But I don't, obviously had a great time at Middlesbrough. So. We've had um, we've had a few lads on recently that played for McLaren in his uh, more recent spells at Derby, and mm. he's generally considered to be like just like a, a guru. Like, how good is he? Like, as a coach, is is he mm. one of the best? Yeah, yeah. plain and simple. Yeah, he's brilliant. You know, his sessions are good. Thought out, he's meticulous with his planning, um, and the, the the biggest thing is you, you just as a player, you enjoy it. You know, you enjoy the session. It's high tempo, intensity is there. Obviously, he has his way of playing, um, game plan, his philosophies, etc. But always made sessions um, fun to be involved in as a player. You know, and you felt like you were improving. You felt like you were enjoying it. I don't know if there's any more to it than that, really, in terms of, of coaching. I mean, I think you've cracked it when you can get them, everyone playing for each other and you, you enjoy and going to training. And... Uh, he witnessed that, like you say, in his not his, his not I say his second spell, but in his spell as manager, the unbelievable, weren't they? You know, we got robbed against QPR. I was there, um, you yeah. know, and obviously, I know. <laughs> and trust me, I know. I you know, I was I was there with my my family and my sitting next to my nephew, and um, yeah, it was tough, you know. And I've experienced a couple of them. I I, I was at the Leicester one as well, um, ninety. Four, yeah. Um, so I'm not. Having said that, you know, I was at the uh, West Brom one, which was well, unbelievable. We, we robbed them. <laughs> That's exactly right. True. So that you know, it, it kind of swings and roundabouts, and it that was a, that was a mugging because West Brom were good, weren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna make a mate of mine. John Greenham was playing uh, for West Brom that day. He was, I think, he was captain. And he was sort of running the show, and but. Giles came out, you know, did he come on, Giles, and went down on the line? An hour, didn't he? Stephen uh, and Pearson, yeah, brilliant. Uh, you know, it was, it was a great, great day. So, yeah, he's, he, yeah. To, going back to what you're saying about Steve, he's, yeah, I think, uh, you know, he's, 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 some, sometimes managers, coaches go to clubs and it's a good match. Mm. It's good timing. Um, other times it's not. You know, and obviously he's had he's had spells at clubs where it hasn't worked. But I think if you look at his record, um, in a lot of places, it is, his, uh, his record speaks for itself. I mean, you ask Middlesbrough fans that. Yeah. What should I say? Yeah, Middlesbrough was it a, a league call? I mean, a European final. Um, yeah. And, and you've involved in all that, and was that was that the peak? Do you think of your career just playing in? I think playing... so. Yeah, playing playing your way for cup final in Eindhoven against Sevilla. Uh, Seville um, I think that was their first one and they've now won I want to say six yeah, uh, in 14 right. years mm-hmm. you know and uh, that team you know we lost 4-0 mm-hmm. which on the face of it you think oh you got you got smashed but it really you know we were 1-0 down after 70 and uh, Mark Viduka had a great chance I remember and it was uh, you know it, was, it wasn't a 4-0 game uh, they were better than us, I think it's fair to say, but 
it, it was a shame, you know, looking back. I've never watched the game back. Um, but it was a little bit flat after such an amazing run, you know, we'd, we'd sort of turned it around in the semis and quarters and had such brilliant experiences to then then lose 4-0. I think it felt a little bit um, unfair maybe, but a bit harsh, mm-hmm. the 4-0, because people, you know, you look back and everyone looks at the scoreline, but, um, you know, we were just going for it. I think we had like me and Frank Kudrow at the back for the last 20, 30 minutes and, you know, it was just lambs the slaughter really and they, they sort of, got a couple of late ones and it put a gloss on it. Well, the, the semi-final was probably like one of the, mo- the most famous Middlesbrough games in recent years, wasn't it? When you, was it 3-1 down, 3-0 down? Was it Bucharest? Yeah, so we, we um, it was two legs. Yeah. Um, so, let me think, we lost, um, I didn't play in the first leg. I was injured. Um, and then they scored, uh, I think I think we lost two one away, I'm assuming, what three one away maybe, and they they scored after one or two minutes, mm-hmm. or early on anyway in the second leg. Um, yeah, we, we, yeah, we needed three, mm-hmm. and uh, Southgate went off because he was a captain, you know, and probably our best player. He went off after half an hour or half time. He was injured, and. Uh, yeah, we've got three goals, I think, in the last 20, 30 minutes. I got the, I got one of them. It was, a, you know, one of my best ever slide. It was like, I like could slid in from like a yard out. <laughs> um, but that was, you know, that was a pretty, that was a pretty big moment to get us back in it. And then we scored um, two more macaroni. Um, I think Viduka scored one. And macaroni, I mean, people are going to listen to this. Middlesbrough fans may be like, what's he talking about? He's got it all wrong. But it was it, it was following on from a run where we'd had a few good comebacks. So it was amazing to get there. Absolutely incredible. Um, and for me personally, it was nice to score that because that was on the Wednesday, I think. On the Saturday or Sunday, three days before, mm. I missed an absolute sitter in the semi-final FA Cup at Villa Park. And we played West Ham. Do you remember the year where West Ham lost to Gerard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the general final, yeah. yeah. So, in the semi, we played West Ham at Villa Park. We were losing 1-0. Um, and about 20 minutes to get... I don't know it was. Again, we were looking for the equaliser. It fell to me. I haven't, I haven't actually watched that back genuinely because it haunts me. But it fell to me. It the, I'd, normally, I'd normally stick it, you know, because I was half decent at finishing. Mm-hmm. And I just tried to hit it with sort of the, out, the outside of my right foot and hit it and basically caught it on the wrong and it just sort of swazzed in and it sort of went wide left and um, yeah that was, a, that was a bad one and I remember my brother that I was gutted and my brother said you know semi-final FA Cup I mean you know playing for a place to play Liverpool in the final that would have been pretty pretty amazing but I speak to my brother that night and he said don't worry mate you're going to get one Wednesday you'll make up for it because obviously we had, the, we had two semi-finals in three or four days so you know that, that turned out um, to be true so Pretty cool uh, little spell, to say the least. What was um, Southgate like? Because obviously you've gone in and played alongside him when you broke in at Middlesbrough. And I always think he's a bit underrated. People don't remember him for being as good as he was. He was, from as a fan's perspective anyway, he was unbelievable. Yeah, I think he's probably the best player i played with. Um, you know, of course, everyone looks at attacking players generally, when they think of um, best players that you've played with or whatever or against. But he, uh, yeah, I think he just made me look a lot better than, you know, I probably was. You know, he, he elevated my game. I went to Middlesbrough when they had Southgate and Ekiog. Mm. So, was, you know, they'd been at Villa for years. They'd formed this partnership. Middlesbrough signed them both. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, I went there full knowledge that they had these two guys you know obviously um, Ugo rest in peace um, had his share of injuries which gave me my chance basically and the, Colin Cooper was there as well who'd had an, obviously an unbe- unbelievable career we won't mention who we played for before uh, <laughs> I don't swear but, <laughs> you know he was a great guy Coops and he um yeah, so it wasn't the easiest task to sort of break in, 
but um, had a few opportunities with injuries, etc., to get in there and um, took a couple of years really to sort of not establish myself, but at least to, to play pretty regularly. And uh, yeah, Gareth was a great leader, you know, a, a great man in the changing rooms. Um, but like you say, what a player, you know, we didn't see him really ever get beat. Um, talked, basically talked me through 90 minutes, 95 minutes of a game. He was such a leader, you know, taking command on the field and inspirational, you know, good guy off the field that everyone is now witnessed is obviously with his, with his role with England. But, you know, we were lucky enough to have that or, you know, for maybe, what, five, six years as a player. Um, and then, of course, he became the, the manager sort of in the later days of my time at Middlesbrough. So, yeah, I was definitely very fortunate to to uh, to be there at the time when he was. And and from Middlesbrough, you ended up coming back to, to Derby and, and, and Burton later on in your career, um, obviously not featuring. Was it 31 when you retired? I think, I think so. Yeah. So was that was that just a case of Sounds right. Yeah, so I, you know it was and again you know like, trying to keep things upbeat, but when I went, you know I was I, I was I'm trying to think now. I was at Cardiff, mm-hmm. so I went to Cardiff uh, September two thousand ten. Mm-hmm. I think it was. Um, yeah. I signed the day that they signed Bellamy. And, uh, you know, there, there was good things happening there. Dave Jones, the manager, they're having a big push for the Premier League. Um, it had some, you know, some some really good players there. And going to September, spoke to, you know, Dave knew that I'd had about injury problems and basically said, take your time, try and get fit. So I did, you know, and they got me right. I played, I made my debut um, 20, it was day after, I think it was Boxing Day. Um, at home played next to Mark Hudson I can't remember who played but we won we got a clean sheet and then you know I had to play 26 and then the 28th I missed the 28th because it was only a day in between and I'd, you know, I'd not been fit for long so and then I played against Bristol City away on New Year's Day and uh, gone up for a corner I think half an hour into the game and uh I think it's almost like jogging back and then my, my hamstring just went and it wasn't even sprinting mm. and I couldn't walk. I got stretched off. Um, and that was just, you know, it was a nerve a neural thing or whatever. And it was bad. You know, I had a scan on it and it was going to be months or whatever. And my head was just like, you know what, I've been, I've had problems at Middlesbrough and uh, with injuries. And it's difficult when you've been on the sidelines for so long to have such a, and that was in the, so I went to see Dave Jones um, terminated my contract basically because, mutually you know it was, doing, it was it was fine I said just get back up to Derby be with your family so I did that um, and I was coming out to the States because I'd met my missus then and Nigel Clough called me at the airport and said what's going on I said oh I'm going over to the States for a bit of time away and he said well when you get back come in and we'll have a look at you and I said oh my hamstring I can't even walk Said, well, you know, get yourself, yeah, come in. So anyway, did that. Came back in that February. Saw some of the physios. You know, he was he was keen to sort of get me involved. I ended up having back surgery because it was a nerve. You know, yeah. I, I to bore you with injuries, but it was it, the the hamstring thing and everything was stemming from my lower back. So I had this I had this surgery in the May of um, twenty eleven. Would it be? I think it was. Yeah. And I did it in Chelsea in London and I just rushed back. You know, I tried, I was desperate to be fit. I would, I'd signed a contract, I think of, it was, it was, I wasn't getting paid. It was just to pay as you play. Mm. Um, and, you know, because it was Derby and because, you know, my family and friends and stuff, it was, it was just a bit of almost like added pressure. Um, you know, and I remember just, just rushing it. I remember having an argument um, with Crosby I think it was at like Darley Park because I was running up and down hills pre-season and I'd just had back surgery and I just didn't, you know, I was at the point when they probably thought I was being big time yeah. or whatever. And I've heard some things that people have said about, you know, a couple, some of his staff or whatever that have said, oh, Riggs was big time. I, wasn't, I just knew 
it didn't you know I knew I was I, it wasn't right I was at that point I you know I played for long enough and had enough injuries to know that it, it, I was struggling yeah. so it was kind of a bit of a um tension because Nigel wanted me to play mm. and I was desperate to play um yeah. but I couldn't get right and we just had a big argument one one day on the training ground my calf same thing with the nerve something happened in a in a pretty basic possession session my calf it put it more farm calf when I walked off Crosby or someone should, Cluffy, Cluffy said something and I shouted back and the lads were laughing that they thought it was hilarious because mm. it was like a full on and then I had, a, I had an argument with him in his office um, you know he said a few things that I wasn't particularly uh, pleased with and uh, I maybe said some stuff to him that he wasn't particularly and I went and saw um, Tom Glick yeah and uh, that was it you know and it was a sh- obviously a shame it was a shame, but it wasn't quite meant to be. And uh, it wasn't through lack of trying. You know, I'd have loved to have gone and played, you know, three, four, five, six years more. But, um, yeah, look back fondly. It was, it was one of them I was blessed to play. And, uh, you know, it would have been nice to have extended it for a little bit longer. But, um, you know, I don't think I'm the only one who, who um, had one or two issues or at least... Uh, didn't necessarily see eye to eye with Nigel, and I don't. I've got that was at the time. I've, I've got no hard feelings now at all. It was just it was one of them things. It's football, and it's the, you know it's the game you play. Well, uh, uh, all the people we've had on that have played for Nigel Clough, it's like almost like a fifty-fifty split of you either get it yeah, and you yeah. buy into it, or some people don't. Do you think they, do you think he miss him and his stuff misinterpreted you with your injuries breaking down and not what, uh, as you coming in and being oh, I do passing it off. Yeah, I think that's. I think you've nailed it. I do. I think um, that. I think it was fairly well documented that he basically way before I was there. There's a load of players off the back of that, you know, bad season in the Premier League. Were on big money, um, and he came in and chopped it all, didn't he? I, I, I know I, there's a lot, a lot of players who are on decent money who he came in. His remit was to get rid of the you know the, the wage bill or whatever, and upset a lot of players who. Had had a pretty good career, you know. Maybe that was obviously a bad experience in the Premier League that year. But um, I think I probably just got thrown in, possibly with that mentality of, oh, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't have to go into the conversation we had. But I can tell you that it was it's that's probably spot on. It was a case of he thought maybe I was um, too big for my boots, possibly, or that I had this. Um, attitude of I've, I've done it and I've played in the Premier League it wasn't that at all I mean anyone that knows me hopefully would um, you know, testify to that so yeah it was I think it's probably just a bit of a, uh, a misread and who knows what's going on at the time with him and his staff and maybe the pressure or whatever it was just one of them things that it blew up and yeah it is a shame because it, it, uh, it didn't have to that didn't have to happen Any regrets? Across your career, anything you'd have changed? Uh, no, 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 no regrets. I mean, you know, it's a cliche, isn't it? But tend to not try and have regrets because at the time you make a decision, or you, you know, you make these decisions based on what you think is the right choice at that time. And of course, some people, you know, maybe it's not always the best decision you make at the time, but that's the only way I think you can you sort of live your life. And definitely no regrets. Um, mainly thankful um you know and uh just very appreciative for everything that the game gave me and is giving me still and um yeah i've been uh, in, uh, very fortunate like i said at the start of our chat you know i got a lot of friends who who didn't play who easily could have and uh you know i think uh I think regrets would be too strong. Things, maybe injuries, things like that. But I didn't mean to, you know, I couldn't help it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of them. I'm mainly thankful, I'd say. Mate, thank you so much. I mean, no, again, I know it's a cliche and that when you do things like this, but growing up a massive Derby fan and, and you giving me a time, I've really, really enjoyed talking to you, mate. And next time you're in Derby, I owe you a pint because uh, you gave me some brilliant memories as a Derby fan, mate. So, uh, I owe you one. Nice one for that, mate. Yeah, no, no problem at all. And uh, yeah, good luck to you and everything, you know, everything that you're doing with your career and stuff. You're doing a great job. 
and uh, yeah we'll definitely keep in touch alright lovely thank you Chris mate it means the world thank okay. you very much yeah Take cheers buddy yourself. thank you